Wallabies France. This is quite a series. It's uh, one apiece. Game one went to the Wallabies 23-21. A last minute snatch on a uh, French era to win game one. And then game two also very close. 28 points to 26. France uh, not scoring as many tries but with the boot of Jaminet were able to um, yeah, see off the Aussie fight back. Really interesting series. Um, and both very young squads as something you kind of have to keep into account, but with a few experienced hands around. Uh, we will go through the squads. I'll put those in the description so you guys can check them out. Some of the stats, the predictions, and uh, yeah, you guys can let me know your thoughts on how this one is going to play out. So it's a pretty short turnaround. They only played on Tuesday. And this is a, uh, a Saturday game. So you would have thought that maybe the coaches would really, you know, do sweeping changes. And I guess if the, um, if, the, if the series had already been wrapped up one way or the other, we really would have seen every guy get a game. But with the fact that there's still everything to play for in this third game, uh, both coaches have kept things maybe a bit more stable than I would have predicted. Uh, the Wallabies have gone with Slipper, Paenga, Mosa, and Ala Alatoa. So three guys who all played in that previous game, although Ala Alatoa was on the bench. That's kind of back to the original game when Tupo was on the bench. Tupo started in game two. He is once again back to the bench for that impact role. Swain and Salakai Aloto also played in game one and two. Swain, though, is up from the bench for game three. So that means Matt Phillip drops to the bench. There's no guys in the type five who are new additions to the 23. Uh, Swinton is at six. Hooper is at seven. And Nicerani is at eight. So that is the one area where you see actual genuine change with uh, Swinton coming in at six for Valtini, who drops to the bench. And uh, Valtini, whilst he's a big old unit, he maybe doesn't quite have the mongrel that we would expect to see from the likes of a Lockie Swinton. He likes to get in guys' heads. He's a bit of a talker. Not not to shy away from a bit of kind of off-the-ball stuff. So look for Swinton to get under the skin of the French players and put in some big hits. Obviously, he'll want to stay on the field for 80 minutes. He has been known to be prone to a card every now and again uh, as a bit of a pest. That kind of that's to be expected. Uh, Hooper's still there at 7, and he has been one of the standouts for them for sure. And Nicerani gets a crack ahead of Wilson, who drops out of the 23. Uh, McDermott finally gets his crack at 9. It's been Jake Gordon thus far. And Gordon, whilst he's been okay, he hasn't been anything all that flash. He maybe does have a better, crisper pass than McDermott, but McDermott is, uh, is probably better at getting in the heads of the defenders, you would have to say, with his ability to run the ball. Uh, Lolisio is there at 10. There was some talk that James O'Connor might be fit, but then he seems to still be struggling a little bit with his uh, fitness. So it's Lolisio again. So he gets another game, a third start in a row for him. Uh, Paisami and Ikitao is a new midfield. Paisami moves from 13 to 12. Probably his... Is it his better position? At the Reds, it kind of depends on who he's playing with. He plays with Stewart. He plays at 13. But if he plays with... Um, if he plays with... Pattaya, uh, then he plays at 12. So, I don't know. Paisami at 12. Iki Towers at 13 anyway. And uh, I think it's only his second game after coming off the bench last week. So, it's a relatively... You look at that 9, 10, 12, and 13. Key part of the squad. But all of those guys, very young and few in caps. Uh, Korobetsi is on the left wing, Dalgunu comes in for right on the right wing, and uh, Banks is still there at 15, so Dalgunu for right is a genuine change, right drops out of the 23, but Korobetsi continues on, denied a couple of tries in that last game, that's kind of been the story of his 2021, and uh, as I mentioned, yeah, Banks is there at fullback, they have brought in a couple of fresh set of legs on the bench in Uelese as hooker cover and Reese Hodge, who covers virtually the entire background bar, uh, back back department, back line is what I was meaning to say, uh, apart from nine, literally covers I think every other position, uh, Tamua also drops to the bench after, I don't know man, like he had pretty lackluster couple of games, uh, I guess they're, they're back in Lolisio to do more in his third game because Tamua, I'm not sure has been adding enough value to justify his spot in the starting lineup anyway. 
Um, for France, they have changed more players than what we've seen from the Aussies. So with the short turnaround, we may see the Aussies kind of come out faster and uh, a bit sharper with those combinations largely intact, but maybe over the course of the 80 fresher legs for the, the French side, because yeah, as I mentioned, a lot more changes. Uh, Forletta comes in for Cro at, uh, at loose head. Folatea comes in for Humpatan uh, at tight head and Barlow continues on a hooker. So two new props, uh, one's up from the bench and one's into the 23. So fresher than maybe what we will see. But both those guys, I think, played in the first test anyway as starters. Kazo moves from five to four. And Tofu Fanua comes up from the bench to, to start at lock. Kazo, I think, got through a heap of tackles in that other game, like 20 plus. So he may be one guy who looks to get subbed around between 40 and 60 minutes. I can't imagine him going to 80, but you never know. Uh, Creton is back at six. Remember, he was uh, substituted with Diallo for the second game, but I think Creton had a knock after the first game, so he's kind of back as one of the original studies. Woki was probably like man of the match performance in the last game. Very busy at line-out time, both offensively and defensively. Got through a lot of work at the breakdown. Also got through a few tackles of his own and had some run meters. So the guy did a bit of everything. He's a proper star. Uh, so he continues on in Geelong. Uh, plays his third game in a row as captain at number eight. I think he's played six, eight, and eight this this uh, series. Kuyu continues on at number nine. So he's another guy with three games in a row, but they've got a new 10 in Hastoy. It is his debut for the French, so that may be an area, again, where you just lack that little bit of um, experience at international level. I mean, Lotto doesn't have a lot more experience, but I guess it is, it is a lot. It's a lot more than zero. Uh, to be running the show at test level. Vincent moves from 13 to 12, so there's no Dante. I'm pretty sure all the Aussie guys uh, on their defensive shift will breathe a sigh of relief and not having to tackle the big unit that is Dante, but Barassi is at 13. And from memory, he's pretty lively. Speaking of lively, Teddy Tomar is on the left wing. He's a proper veteran of the squad. Plus Peno, he's playing his third game in a row. Bit of a turnaround for Peno. Very quiet in the first game, but very busy in the second. Uh, and then Jaminet is there at fullback, and he's inexperienced, but he's on his third game in a row as well. And man, he looked like totally up to test level from what we've seen of him thus far, kicking the goals and uh, just generally running the show at the back. So um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting one to see. It's interesting that the French have not played several of their guys that they brought on tour. So it's unfortunate to be going on tour and not even get a single minute, but I guess... Uh, winning comes first and they did manage to get that win in game two so they have to kind of go for the uh the jugular here uh they have gone with three backs uh on the bench this time rather than two but they've still got bumbo who's experienced Etria, i think has played as the reserve hooker for both of the games thus far uh Ariburen is still there they have been kicking a lot from nine have um have france i think Kuyu kicked like 10 times compared to Gordon's three last week. So it's a difference in tactic. Kicks from hand overall 26-15. So France, very happy to play without the ball. Very happy to win turnovers. They had 10 last week to the Aussies too. So they kick the ball to you and then you give it back to us. Um, and we'll kick penalties all day. But um, interestingly, like Australia had more run meters, more defenders beaten, more possession. But the clean breaks was nine apiece. So it's kind of like the first game in that it was doing more or the same with less. Seems to be France's tactic. They're quite happy to absorb that pressure and then hit you on the counter or just to keep the scoreboard ticking over with that reliable boot of Jaminet. Turnovers conceded last week, 12 to 5. So uh, the Aussies, along with getting turned over by the French, will have to watch their own errors because you don't need to be giving these guys any chances. From what we've seen, they will take them. But... Um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts on this one. It is game number three. It's 10 p.m. over here in New Zealand. So uh, it's unfortunate that it's not a midweek game. It's it's falling in with all the other games in, in, the, in the regular week. It's a shame it's such a short turnaround. But with the pandemic, that's just kind of been the way that it's had to be organized. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm just going to miss having games on like a Tuesday or a, what was it, a Thursday? No, Wednesday. It's been great having midweek games when there's usually not much on. So, um... Yeah, who are you guys predicting to take out the series? They've been pretty much dead even thus far. Uh, you would probably say the Wallabies maybe have been a little bit disappointing given that they're not playing the first string 
uh, French side, and most of these Wallabies guys, not all, uh, they've got a few guys out, but most of these Wallabies guys are, um, are some of the first team guys. But as I mentioned, both squads very young, and it does speak to the depth that France have at the moment. But anyway, you guys let me know your thoughts, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.